All right, thanks very much, Courtney, alongside Aaron Dickens of Tech Talk on Double T 104.3 and, of course, RedRaiderSports.com. Where do we start? Uh, I guess, first of all, the atmosphere tonight, incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, fans showed up. They were a factor. They were loud. You know, the, several tech players mentioned that in the postgame uh, press conference that, uh, you know, it clearly affected both how they were able to kind of respond to some of the adversity that they faced. It, you know, it also had an impact on Texas A&M. Had to call several timeouts. Um, so kudos to the crowd. They showed up, I think, 58,000 plus in, in the stadium, uh, and, and they were in it uh, for the duration. Seth Dagey, um, 44 of 66, 391, three touchdowns, no picks. He was mobile a bit as well again. Another strong game for Dagey. Yeah, and, and he was under pressure quite a bit. And they said in the postgame press conference that, that you know, they decided at points to go with five in protection. and was blitzing a lot almost every play. And so in those situations, you're – probably going to get hit some and they kind of knew that going in kudos to Daggy for for staying cool in the pocket as much as he did no picks sacked three times didn't lose any fumbles did drop put on the turf a couple times but uh, you know Daggy did well first year starter I think we've, we've kind of seen him mature and kind of grow over these first five games you know he, he, he had a good night uh, uh, you know we had 105 snaps uh, he, he had a lot of opportunities I thought he threw the deep ball well uh, and, and he made made a, made a lot of good decisions. I don't I didn't throw an interception. Uh, when you've got 66 passing plays and don't throw an interception, you're doing something right. Darren Moore obviously didn't get any time tonight, but once again the receiver stepping up. Alex Torres, big game for him. Alex Torres had over 100 yards receiving. Eric Ward had 10, uh, 10 catches. Adam James had a big night too. Uh, caught a touchdown pass. Mentioned in the postgame press conference several drops, several missed assignments that you don't necessarily see on the stat sheet, but. Uh, you know, the receiving core played good enough to win. I think the, the running backs played well enough to win. Came down to too many missed opportunities for us. You know, we had, we're inside the 15 twice and got to settle for field goals, and we didn't do a good job. Well, we, our final numbers were good on, on third down uh, and third and fourth down, but it really hurt us in the third quarter. You know, defense held serve. It was an eight-point game. We had a chance to get back in it uh, on two different occasions to, to go down and tie it up, and we didn't do it. A little more on number 24, Eric Stevens. You could tell his teammates were genuine crushed about this kid. He is a great kid, and it does not look good. No, all class. He's been uh, great to deal with from a media standpoint, uh, as far as a teammate standpoint, um, or a player standpoint, since the moment he got here in 2009. Always has a, has a smile on his face. Uh, you know, it's like Neil Brown says, your heart aches for the kid. Um, has had a great season to this point, became the first player this year to rush for over 100 yards against A&M. You know, several plays later, he goes down with that injury, and you're right. It was clear from the moment it happened that it was not good. The air went out of the stadium. There were gasps in the press box. It was it was not good. Um, you know, no update on his status yet. But they did say in the post game press conference that it quote did not look good. So Eric's been a huge part of our offense. Uh, obviously, uh, he's, he's been very productive. He's probably one of the you know maybe the best the best offense player we have on this team. And uh, you know he's a great guy, a great leader. So. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's going to hurt, but at the same time, we're going to have to, you know, find some guys that, that want to step up and fill that void. Important for guys like Aaron Crawford, DeAndre Washington, Kenny Williams to step up moving forward because they'll have to shoulder a heavy load. Uh, defensively, once again, even though they, they tackled better in this game, I thought they played a better first quarter than they have in some prior games. Still, it just seems like there's times where the opposition's running back, Aaron, goes untouched. Well, they had several... Uh, you know, third and long situation in the first half, they let get by them, um, and, and those led to points. I think they tightened up pretty well in the second half. They, they didn't force any turnovers that will show up in the stat sheet, but they did force a fourth down uh, stop. They did, uh, you know, rough the punter, A&M did. So those are two de facto turnovers. Weren't able to really capitalize on those and, and settle for field goals more often than touchdowns. But, uh, you know, defensively, you know, stats don't look great. But they did well considering. I mean, considering the NFL talent you're going up against, uh, Trey Porter was out for most of this game. Leon Mack was in and out. Um, so I think you expected AM to score points and move the football. So. We talk every week about going and taking a step forward as a football team and growing up. And I thought we got better as a football team this week with it. I thought our kids prepared very well. Uh, there's still a lot of things that we got to go correct. And, and we're going to come to work tomorrow, and we're going to try to start getting better and, and take another step next week. As far as uh, special teams go, you know, Ben McRoy, another strong performance, over 100 yards in, in the return game. Yeah, he's, he's developed into a weapon and one that has to be respected. And I thought you see, saw that later in the game with AM kind of squib kicking and, and kicking it up pretty short. Keelan Huber got a nice return on one of those. Um, you know, special teams-wise, what will be taken away from this game is not – 
McCroy's great returns or Donnie Corona's, you know, school record tying four field goals, it's the block, which resulted in a touchdown, and the difference was five points, so you can kind of, you know, make conclusions for yourself. Just a critical mistake. It just kind of, you know, tech shooting themselves in the foot. Can you talk about uh, the decision to uh, to kick a field goal about nine minutes left to go in the fourth quarter? I think it was fourth and eight, fourth and long. Uh, the field goal, you're still down 12. Your, your thoughts on that decision? Well, plenty of time left. Um, you know, it, was, it wasn't it was fourth and short. It was fourth and long. You're down your top receiver. You're down your top running back. Um, you know, it, you go for points, extend the game, uh, and stay alive to fight, uh, you know, another another series. I knew we could score some more points. We just had to score touchdowns, and so that, that brought us within 12. And then, of course, naturally, we, we scored again to put ourselves within five within a touchdown. And if we don't kick that, then we're, we're, we're not even – don't have a chance right there at the end. So you got to take points as much as, 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 much as you can. Uh, I would have loved to have gone for it, but the odds of making that wasn't real good. So we took the points and went on with it. You know, that's going to get a lot of criticism, I think, from fans, you know, rightly or wrongly. I think they played the percentages there. It didn't work out in the end. Uh, but at the time, I thought that was probably the right play. All right, Aaron, thanks for your time. We'll do it again next week. The Kansas State Wildcats are in town. They're quite the football team this year. It's homecoming. Courtney, back to you in the Fox 34 studio.